Hey guys, welcome. I am Mark and I'm sitting with Francis the Movie Man. Now again, if, if you've seen any of our previous installments, you will know that this is not the super duper movie critic show. This is for the average guy, girl out there that are looking for something to see, you want to take your kids to, you want to go do a matinee, uh, what to expect. This guy knows tons of movies, tons of facts. He could tell you who was in the French foreign film from 1920 and who starred and why they spoke and what was going on with the casting and all that stuff. So yeah, speaking like 20 was silent. There you go. <laughs> so Francis, the movie man, is going. Today we're going to talk about, we're going to flip it up and go a little light with the movie Sparkle. Tell us what Sparkle is. It sounds like a Taylor Swift song. Who is in Sparkle? Well, as everyone is, must be aware by now because of their tragic their tragedy. This is Whitney Houston's last film. She uh, co-produced it. It was a big uh, dream project of hers. Uh, I'm not sure why, because having just seen the original Sparkle for the second time uh, on television, actually, I don't really know what the inspiration was to redo this movie. Actually, if you look at the original Sparkle, look at this Sparkle, it's almost like two entirely different movies. Who is Supposedly in the based on The Supremes. Uh, this one... Well, who was in the original? The original... Uh, the immortal Philip Michael Thomas, Irene Cara, and wow. Lonette McKee, and Dorian Harewood. Uh, I know they're all black legends in the 70s. Not so much now, maybe. Um, this one stars the maybe, maybe not future star Jordan Sparks. Uh, the legendary Whitney, who unfortunately yeah. uh, looks bloated in this film. And really? not very, not very healthy, uh, understandably. We're keeping it real here with Francis, the movie man. Whitney only has two songs, His Eyes on the Sparrow, at the beginning of the film in church, and a duet with Jordan at the end of another song called Celebrate, which I believe was written by someone famous <laughs> in the music industry about 40 years ago. You'd have to look that up. Uh, the film itself took me a while to warm up to because I had a little... It concerns three sisters. It's loosely based supposedly on the... The Supremes. The original film was set in 1958 in Harlem. This is set 10 years later in Detroit because there's more of a Motown connection to this one. The first movie concerned itself mostly with the 50s rock and roll roots of what would later become black music. This concerns itself. Motown is already there. They're in Detroit. And that's what their inspiration is for this movie. Uh, like I said, it took me a while because there are three sisters and it took me a while to figure out which sister was which. And uh, <laughs> once that gets rolling, the film does get involving. I have to say, as a dramatic piece, this one involved me more than the original. Usually that's not the case with me. Usually I favor the original over the remake. Uh, but like I said, I just saw the original on television just actually today. And I was not that involved with the original. I hadn't seen it since 1976, since it first came out. I had really no definite memories of it. This one is better on a dramatic level. Uh, the only thing is, with this film, uh, it is very... It is involving, and I did like it, but that specter, legacy, if you will, of Whitney Houston does hang over the film. The film is dedicated to her at the end, to our friend Whitney Houston. And every time you see you just... You can't shake the memory of what happened. So, so it's like when you see Michael Jackson's This Is It, you know, you cannot shake that memory. That was it. So as we keep it in perspective... But it is the film. This is August 2012. Whitney Houston passed away just a few months ago. February. And February. And wow. Pre-Grammy night. Pre-Grammy night. And uh, so now we're fast-forwarding about six months or so, and this movie's just coming out in theaters or just been out a little bit. Um, right. So what would you... Uh, would you recommend this movie to anyone? Yes. Would you enjoy it? I would. And Why? If you're a Whitney Houston fan, definitely you want to see her last work. If you're not a Whitney Houston fan, but you still like a good story. And Jordan Sparks, uh, like I said, I don't know if she'll have much of an acting career, but... Mm -hmm. And why do you say that? This... Well, I... I wasn't totally Shouldn't knocked out by her performance, but on the other hand, you have to deal with material they're given. Uh, based on the material she was given in this movie, she was fine. I don't know if she's going to go on to other material that she can 
maybe she can do comedy. I don't know. This is not a comedy. This is a drama. This is not a light film. Hmm. Uh, this was co-produced also. The other producer on the film is T.D. Jakes, very well-known bishop. So there's a very religious black church streak running through this, which was not present so much in the first film. The first film has very little to do with the church. Okay. This one has more so. So, yeah, no, I would recommend this film to someone who wants to be involved in an involving drama. But not if you're going to see, if you want to see a, a light musical, this is not your material. Are you going to enjoy this movie more if you're a music fan or if you're a Motown fan, or is that kind of irrelevant? Uh, they generally sing newer material written for the film. Some of the songs are older. Written, some of the songs are from the original film, written by Curtis Mayfield. Hmm. I think you would enjoy this. The audience I was with, although small and mostly, well, it was a mixed audience. I can't say it was all black. I can't say it was all white. It was about 50-50. Older crowd. I didn't see any young people there at all. Uh, they seemed to enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Like I said, it took me a while. It took me maybe half an hour to warm up to this two-hour movie to get actually into the story. Okay. But once that was done, I did go along for the ride. So uh, you would not be disappointed at this movie. I would, I would recommend this as someone who actually wants a good, a, a, a good night out. Okay. That's my opinion of, of the new Sparkle. And, and like I said, you know, if you want to see the original, it plays on cable all the time. Uh, I myself didn't think it was all that great, but I think this one's a little better. Okay, so there you go. If you are a Whitney Houston fan, if you just uh, you want to get into something that you just heard about, you want to check out her last work or just a good drama, you said? Drama, then musical drama. You heard it here. You heard it from Francis the Movie Man. Go check out Sparkle, and we uh, will be talking to you guys on the flip side. Thank you.